Good evening and uh, welcome to a great discussion that we're about to have. I'm Matthew Gibb and I'm here in the beautiful Orient Center, uh, the On TV studios, and we're going to talk about a very interesting topic tonight. It's the Downtown Development Authority and the ballot initiative that's on um, just in a couple of weeks, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, coming before us. Uh, this was originally scheduled as a debate between uh, two very well-intentioned sides to the question of what do we do about our current downtown development authority. You may have heard it referred to simply as the DDA. A lot of people are like, well, what is a DDA? Well, it stands for Downtown Development Authority. It's an organization that got created in our town, um, gosh, almost 40 years ago now. It's uh, 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 been a very valuable tool and a very valuable group of leaders in our community for a long time. And a question has arisen of, um, well, is it funded correctly? And has it been around too long? Does it have more work to do? Is it uh, the right people? All of these different questions. And it's related down to a, a ballot issue that's going to happen on November 7th. Is that correct? That's correct. On November 7th. And so we had scheduled this as a debate on the two sides of that question of, of uh, what do we do about this DDA? And uh, well, one side decided at the very last minute that uh, uh, they didn't want to discuss it. And maybe their words are better suited. They seem to get them in the newspaper more than they get them into uh, the neighborhood conversations, but mm -hmm. maybe we can fill some of those gaps. Uh, uh, I have with me tonight Brian Winter, Jamie LaPiccolo, who are two members of a committee that got formed that mm -hmm. uh, would kind of organize these thoughts and these questions as to what is this DDA thing and why are we having a vote about it? So why don't we start there? Um, what is the committee that you formed? Brian, what is the committee? Sure, the committee is Save the Lake Orion DDA. And I think it's very important to note that we are a committee that I have formed with Jamie and several of, of our other wonderful committee members. And I think it's important to note that we are completely independent from the DDA, from the village. We are just everyday citizens, residents, business owners that came together because we very much like what we see that our DDA has done with our downtown area and we want to keep that going. And so we were just motivated to come together to support the DDA. Yeah, I know you as a business owner, you mm -hmm. have SOAR learning, yep. right? And yep. uh, Jamie, um, you've got uh, a business in accounting yep. or tax or C C C CPA firm. CPA down, firm. Yeah, yep. Yep. I, I thought of you as the tax man all of a sudden. I'm like, right. no, no, that's a different different job. Right. So you guys are just business owners within the right. downtown area, right? Yeah. yeah. And passionate about the community, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Passionate about the community, yeah. passionate about the downtown area. I've. My office has been down there now seven years, and I can't think of another place I'd want to be. That's good. So you've seen some transformation. But Absolutely. What is this thing that's a DDA? I think a lot of people, are, they get confused. They're like, uh, um, oh, what is the DDA? Is it the flower fair? Or is it the, the carnival? That con what is it? Jamie, what is the DDA? Yeah, it, it's, it, that's a great point. The, the DDA originally was formed as, as, a, as a mechanism, if you will, to help restore the downtown areas of, of various communities. We're not the only community that has a DDA. Oxford has a DDA, other areas have DDAs. And really what it is is, is a way to target, it originally started out to target blight and maybe the area wasn't being developed enough, maybe too many of the same businesses or, or and so what they've done is, is it allowed for this organization to be formed within the village, in our case in the within the village confines, and then allow for targeted funds to go there to exactly, as I said earlier, to fight the blight, to to develop it into something better than where it was at. And and then and as we've seen, if you think of Lake or those that have been around Lake Orion long enough, we started off with one restaurant, the DDA came in and now we've got more and different businesses. And so it's grown and then tried to improve the downtown area, which benefits not only the, the immediate downtown, but everybody that comes to it and the surrounding areas. I do know that uh, a lot of people that might watch this would say, oh, well, Matt Gibb, you, you were part of economic development, so I recognize the interrelation, and I, the Main Street program is in the village, and, and it's an award-winning Main Street program. Uh, I know that as being the person that ran Main Street for all those years. Um, how are those two, two things tied together? Go ahead. Well, you know, I think it's important to note that although you're a business owner, I'm a business owner, the DDA is not to be confused as like a chamber of commerce. Right. This is not right. about Good. just business owners. Um, the Main Street program, it actually, there's a national level, there's a county level, and, and, and we are, I guess you could say, members of that. And really, the, the goal of this Main Street America program, along with what our DDA does, 
is yes to build up our downtown, but this is not about like, oh, build it up for the business owners. This is about our community. This is to create an environment, an economic center, and, and how you have an economic center is not just a bunch of business owners, you have to create an environment that is attractive for people to come to. So that's why like just last week, we had our Halloween extravaganza that brought in hundreds of trick-or-treaters and gave them a safe environment to come down and just participate in our community and, and get candy and, and just enjoy. We do so many events, but those events aren't really, it's not just about, you know, let's line the pockets of the business owners. It really truly is about just creating a center of our community that families want to be in. And if, and, 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 and if families and people want to be there, then yes, the business owners know that if we are there to service their needs, they're going to see our storefronts, they're going to see all the different services we offer, they're going to see our establishments that they can enjoy. And, and that's why the businesses want to be there. So there's a lot of moving, a lot of moving pieces. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, you know, one of the things that I'm, I'm always impressed upon is that um, a downtown development authority uh, is there about development. It's in its name in and of mm -hmm. itself. And um, like you're, you're in the downtown and you're a happy uh, tenant and uh, right. down there. I looked at a building years ago and boy, I should have bought it years ago because right. my gosh, the values of property mm -hmm. in our village of Lake Orion, the downtown where the DDA serves, are certainly, uh, certainly through the roof. So, uh, and all of these great events. So, so Brian, what's the issue then? I mean, it seems like the DDA is just this positive momentum generating um, group of great leaders within our community. So what, what's the issue? I mean, what, how, frame the issue for us. You know, man, it's, that's a fantastic question. And boy, this is one of those, if I had a nickel for every time I was asked that question, because that is what I am getting asked over and over throughout the community by business owners, by residents alike, is wh why is this an issue? And, you know, I, I didn't start this initiative to get this ballot proposal on the ballot my friend Jamie here didn't, it, a group of people did. I can't speak as to why they did this. What I can speak to is n numerous ways in which this just doesn't make sense. This proposal is, is designed to if people vote yes, what they're voting yes to is to dissolve the TIF, Tax Incremental Funding, which is the mechanism by which the DDA is funded. And so this proposal is to eliminate that funding. If you eliminate the funding, you're effectively eliminating the DDA. It, it, there's just numerous ways that you have to have a board in place, you have to have a full full time director, and so it, it's not something. This is not organizing a garage sale. Okay, it, this is like a professional endeavor. So I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah stop you just so we Absolutely. all understand, right? So mm -hmm. uh, the initiative is saying vote yes, and if you vote yes, then what they call a TIF, which is mm -hmm. tax increment financing, and so what that means is the I pay my taxes, mm -hmm. and uh, it's supposed to go to these different places, and then a portion of it gets captured, Correct. and that gets over to the downtown development mm -hmm. authority. So that's what we're talking about: is that Correct. portion that gets yes. captured. Where, where's that money come from? Like what, like what sources is it getting captured from? Sure. So, a portion comes from the village itself, and then we have these outside jurisdictions. We have a little bit from Orion Township. Um, a variety of organizations in Oakland County. We have Oakland Community College. We have Huron-Clinton Metro Parkway Authority. We have North Oakland Transportation Authority. A variety, there are a lot of, if you think of the many millages that you voted on, when those get approved, in fact, if you live in the village and you, if you really read the full ballot language, the, they put all of that language in there for a very specific reason. And part of that language, when you're voting to either approve the initiation of a new millage or renew it, that language, if you are in that precinct, precinct mm -hmm. two in the village, literally says a portion of these funds are going to 
the Downtown Development Authority. So when voters vote, they, they, if they're voting in favor, they are actually voting in favor of a portion of those funds going. So, so we have a bunch of taxes we pay in the community. Mm -hmm. I'm in the township, mm -hmm. and so um, um, uh, I'm not as affected, but my taxes get captured mm -hmm. for this as mm -hmm. well. Uh, the mm -hmm. taxes. So we, we all pay our taxes, uh, and a, uh, a small portion of all of our taxes gets parceled off so I can have a really cool downtown. I mean, that's mm -hmm. basically what yeah. you're talking about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the ballot initiative is, is well, we don't want to. We don't want to do that anymore. I mean, that's the way I'm understanding. Yes. Is that basically mm -hmm. they, what they it wanna, is? They want to take away the portion of the tax capture that goes. It, 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 I mean, to keep it as simple as possible, part of the money that that we pay for in the DDA or the district that's created mm -hmm. goes to the village, goes to the county. Part of that county money comes back. It goes to the various organizations, as, as he said, but then it comes back to the DDA as part of their budgetary to use for the downtown. The, the initiative is going to say that part of it, we don't want it to come back to the, the DDA. It's going to go back to Oakland County. And, and I'm assuming they think that, that the county in its, is going to then just out of its generosity give us that money back to help fund part of the downtown. And, and if, if I know anything about county government, you're, you give them money, they're not necessarily going to be out of their good gracious to bring it back. And, and their other argument is, is that, well, right now, out of the portion of the village, so it's, imagine it's split into twos, right? So ignoring the county portion, but say that they're going to want the, the portion that goes to, to Orion, the village, then that is given to the DDA f roughly $400,000 or so in some change. They're saying, well, we don't want that to go to the DDA. We want to go that back to the village so the village and the people that we elected in the village mm -hmm. have a say of where that money goes. The problem that they're not thinking of when they do that is that part of the agreement that any DDA has is they have budgetary expenses and they pay for everything that happens in downtown, which includes police force, watering, electricity, keeping the streets clean, keeping the garbage picked up. Well, those expenditures will no longer be able to be paid by the DDA because there won't be a DDA. So those expenditures don't disappear because you still have to clean the garbage, you still have to clean the streets, you still have to have the police go back to the village as, as an expenditure on the village's budget line items. So now all of a sudden, roughly I think that we had said 400,000 coming in, there's roughly 300 and some odd thousand that the village, if you look at the DDA's budget, is money that they give back to the village. So it comes to the DDA as tax dollars, and then it goes back to the village as a reimbursement of expenses. So the, the village is getting part of that, mm -hmm. leaving the, the DDA with about $165,000 of, of just money coming in from the local area. The problem that we see now is, is as we, we know, there is now a debt service associated with a bond that was recently issued by the DDA backed by the village, and that is in the neighborhood of about $400,000. So if you do the math, you got 165 left over to pay debt, and you have a $400,000 debt, there's, the math doesn't work. Well, let's break it down a little bit, mm -hmm. sure. step by step. Almost, sure. Right. Yep. You two are, are way steep in it. I'd like to say ankle deep, but I think you're more way <laughs> steep in the, right. whole, the nuts and bolts of it all. And and I'll echo what you said, Jamie. The county's not giving you any money back. Right. I, it's, uh, something tells me I know the answer to that question. <laughs> and you right. know a little yeah. something about that. <laughs> I know a little something. And, and all of the DDAs we have in the county that, that uh, certainly I was involved with for a lot of years, uh, anytime they got shrunk or moved or or the money never comes back. So I right. will assure the people that would watch this in our community that the, the, the money doesn't come back. So uh, so the money gets captured from all of these sources uh, and it, it gets, gets allocated to the Downtown Development Authority. And then you're correct. So a lot of it goes to the village, right? Yeah. So I get a sense just hearing the, the kind of the scuttle out there that there's some sense, and I do wish they would have come tonight to have a little bit more of a debate. Yeah. They could explain it. Um, but I do get a sense that, you know, while the village, the village could use the money, um, what you're saying is, is in large part, the village already gets a lot of that money, but it's technically the Huron Metro Parks and the library and the township. And through that, the DDA is funding a lot of the services that the village right. will then have to kind of find out how to do that. Um, because they're not going to get 
the full DDA budget isn't mm -hmm. going to suddenly flood into the village coffers. Am I am I reading yeah, that? Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. If you think of if you if you kind of try to compartmentalize, the money that goes is it paid in taxes to the village goes to the DDA and then goes back to the village, and then what the the DDA runs the rest of its budget to to beautify the downtown is the TIF money coming from the county. And that is the part that is going to go away with this with, with a yes vote. And that's why we're encouraging everybody to vote no, because we want that money to stay back into the village so that we, we can, or stay back in the downtown area, and which indirectly benefits the village in, a, as a whole. And so there are other ways for them to bring money back to the village. It, but again, we, we've just bought a new project, and we've got a debt service associate with a bond issue. So who's going to pay that if, if the, the DDA goes away? That goes to the village residents. Yeah, and that, that's cast in stone now. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that, that would be um, nearly impossible to undo mm -hmm. and to unravel that mm -hmm. at yeah. this point. So it's just a debt. It's a debt like any others. So, let, let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. the, um, you know, in other parts of our community, this tax financing process has been used. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's called different. Like down on Brown Road, we have the Corridor Improvement Authority. Sure. Um, it's very similar to a downtown right. development authority. It's where you you um, you create a district. Our village has a district, uh, and you capture a small portion of the taxes to do uh, benefit. What was used down there was to match a grant to widen Brown Road to five lanes so that they could clean up all of that contaminated property. And now we have Menards and the Zimmers are building a new Culvers, and it's actually a very vibrant commercial right. corridor for us now. Whether you like that or not, some people wanted it to stay the old swamp lands. I, I get that. But the idea is, is the district created a fund that they could use for matching dollars. I gather the DDA did the same thing. Is that mm -hmm. why we have the streetscape, Brian? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, everything you see downtown from the streetscape to the flowers to the new streetlights, even the redeveloped uh, Children's Park, the Parks and Rec budget for the village is $5,000 a year. And to put in a new playground like we did down there is wait, like wait, 70 Wait, 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 wait. See, now you're, you're educating me even. Yeah. So the Parks and Rec budget, which would go to put in all those giant rocks and boulders and have that great movie night we went to a few weeks ago, uh, and to keep up the streetscape and to put the lights in the trees uh, and to clean the garbage and plant the flower plots, um, and to fix the bricks that come up, all of those things would be 5,000? Wouldn't they have to create a new budget for that, themselves? Well, exactly. But even what I was talking about, including like the playground equipment itself oh, wow. and the soft rubber that we have in there versus you know the, the dirt or whatever that was there before, it, their budget was $5,000. And they were trying to, well, maybe we can just roll that over each year. Okay, after two years, oh, we got 10,000. After three years, we got 50. And they looked, and to put in the new playground equipment we have there, the price tag for that was like 70, 80,000. They're like doing the math, I'm like, it's gonna take us 20 years before we can put this in. So they came to the DDA and they said, any chance you could help us out? And they said, well, yeah, absolutely, we, we could help out with that. Because you know what, that is part of our mission, which is creating this, this district that to attract people down here. So it's so, gotta be one of your, um, please um, vote no, yeah. because we need a, we need this tool in our toolbox, right? Absolutely. I mean, economic development and the vibrancy of communities is about having tools in your toolbox, and the DDA is a tool. It sounds like I mean, That's we you know, but for having that right. particular it, wrench, we wouldn't have the beautiful um, children's uh, park the way it is today. You know, uh, the the irony to this situation is we have two sides to this argument. Now, in my heart of hearts. I really believe we actually both want the same thing, right? I think we want a vibrant, economically yeah. successful community. But where the breakdown is, is what we're saying is, we have this amazing financing mechanism that is not costing our taxpayers any additional dollars. We're able to, you know, we, we're using these crazy phrases like tax capture, what does that mean? You know. We are capturing these taxes, but the, the entities that we're capturing them from, they're actually in favor of this because what they see is that the, the property values over time are increasing and they're like, that's actually good for us like in the long run. I won't go too, too deep into that. But the point is, is that we're looking at this as saying, 
we have a financing uh, mechanism here. We have funds that are currently staying within our community. We want to keep them here. We have, we all know that we have big infrastructure projects. We all want our community to look great. We all want it to be improved. And we're saying we have these funds here available. And to us, we say, why on earth would we want to send these funds outside of our community? How does that make any sense on any level right. to helping us solve some of the real infrastructure problems that we have to solve? It right. just doesn't. So, so it sounds like one of the big points, gentlemen, is uh, it, it, voting yes on this initiative doesn't mean that your taxes go down. It, yeah. it, your taxes don't change at all by voting yes on this. And it doesn't I would argue mean that they, the, may, they may go up because, again, we're, we're showing that there's a shortfall if, they, if you do vote yes, there's going to be short. Yeah. Tell the village, how is the village planning on paying for that shortfall? Or at the very least, you're putting the village in a very, very difficult spot that is, it, maybe it's not a tax increase, but then it's going to be a reduction of services. services, but, services but, but whatever it is, you're, you're going to leave the village with a budget deficit that they're going to have to tackle. figure out. Kind of like putting one of your star players on the sideline for no reason and saying let's try to win the game. Mm -hmm. it, it, that doesn't make much right. sense. So, so, so taxes on mindful time, I want to get all your points in here. Sure. Right? You know? yeah. So, so um, taxes aren't going to go down. Long term, they got to figure it out, right? I mean, we, who knows what that means, but figuring it out, as I know from government, can be a, a, an arduous task, sure, sure. right? Uh, it doesn't mean that there's going to be a big flood of money back into the village. In fact, it sounds like it's going to be another figure it out. Like, how do mm -hmm. we now cover mm -hmm. core expenses that the DDA was using from this capture, which is Absolutely. not just village money, but a lot of sources uh, yeah. of money, particularly the, the county money. Um, but let, let's move to, I know one of their other critical points, it says, who's making these decisions? And mm -hmm. um, I know, I guess I can, I can jump a little bit of time on it, that every DDA, the only way that it gets approved to get to any state, and even though ours is older, is you have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a plan, right? And yeah. so who approves the plan? Uh, you guys don't, you're just two passionate business owners. So who, who approves the plan? How's that work? Right, exactly. The DDA, actually much like the village itself that has a governing board, the DDA has its own governing board. And these, this is, this is a public entity. So these are public meetings. They meet every two weeks. You can go to their meetings. Uh, participating in that meeting is the executive director of the DDA itself as well as the village manager, as well as, in our case, on our board, is the Orion Township manager, or supervisor, and then several other appointed board members. And it's important to know that the DDA works very closely in concert with the village. They're not this rogue entity that is off just operating on their own. So they're to your point, I would argue there's a tremendous amount of oversight. Everything that they do, you can go to their meetings, you can see their minutes, you can watch it on TV, be there in person, whatever. But it's it's operates very similar to how the village council would itself. So it's a public meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, there's minutes of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, anybody can come speak at the meeting. Absolutely. Um, so how do they get like um, hired or fired as a, as a board member? Who does that? Is it? Is well, it the village appoints, or who does who does all of that? Specifically as to board members, I'll say I don't exactly know. That may be a village council piece. You're sitting with the guy who knows. So the village council has Educated to approve on the board, the right? I, so, I thought, yeah. So I know there's been a lot in the the little op eds of our of our, mm -hmm. our great local paper of uh, this is a completely unelected, unaccountable board and clandestine. Well, right. all those people had to go through a public meeting process to be interviewed and appointed and a vote of publicly elected people right. and now they sit on this board. And, and uh, let's keep in mind too that, that a TIF plan, to go back, and, and I mm -hmm. hate because it, it, it's using that word, but, but there's a plan that's created. That plan is still approved, or was originally approved by the village. Somebody had to create it to begin with. So it was the village it created, had the vision for the dream to use the tool, and I love that analogy. This is a, the DDA is a tool to develop the area. Right, and, and that's the best way to put it. And so it's already been approved and, and we elect the, 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 the uh, township or the, the village um, trustees and, and the board members of the, of the village. We elect them 
And so there is representation. It's just a couple layers deep and there's representation. And they had a vision of what they wanted for the DD, of, of the downtown. They used to create a tool to build that vision. And now I, I feel that the other side is saying, we don't like that tool anymore and we want to take it away. Is, is, is what I really, and, and I think that it's, it's unfair because now we're, and again, yes, we're allowing, but the vision is, expires already because the, 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 the DDA, I think, goes to 39? 2039. 39. So at that point in time, the, the, the um, village can make a determination if they want to renew that or not. Well, and even to go a little bit further, every time that TIF is renewed, it is open for open comment from right. the public as well as every outside jurisdiction that is affected. So all of those other jurisdictions outside that we are capturing tax from, they are invited to comment. And you know what? They don't argue about it. And the reason they don't is because, again, we're not going to get into it, but long term, it's to their benefit because they see how our property values rise over time and that benefits them I, in I, the long run. I would just say to the plan uh, that uh, one of the elements of the original DDA plan was to build a tunnel from Greens Park into the village. And I dare say we've never had a tunnel, we're never going to have a tunnel, that plan changes. And, sure. I, and, mm -hmm. and you know, just for the benefit of the public at large, that um, when, a, when a, what they call a TIF plan, again, TIF is tax increment finance, it's just government speak for there's a plan to capture this money and how you use it. Right. And you can't capture it and use it unless you have an approved plan and your elected officials in the village approve that plan. So it is a very transparent, sure. open um, uh, uh, process. It, it, it seems like the, um, the lumber yard project caused a mm -hmm. lot of the, oh my gosh, what's the DDA doing? And now they're gonna buy, or they're gonna buy property. Um, that would have all gone through that process though, right? It did go through yeah. that process. It's, it's, I mean, they're, they're authorized in their, in their charter and to, to be able to do that. So, and, and you know, to, to the point that we've been, you get rid of the DDA or you defund the DDA, you lose the tool in the toolbox to build the downtown, which indirectly has an impact on everybody in the surrounding area's property values. Mm -hmm. Because now all of a sudden there's not, it's, it's not as attractive to live and be in the Lake Orion area. Yeah. So, you know, again, I, I look at this and, and I, I, I th unfortunately I wish, I agree with you, I wish the other side was here because for the life of me, I'm still trying to figure out why they're doing this. And the only thing I can keep, and you asked this question earlier, is, is the only thing I can come up with is I think they're being a little short-sighted on the long-term vision of what a DDA and what the people that are in charge of our village anticipate this, this community to look like. And it could be just that, and you said it earlier, maybe people just don't like change. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, I don't think you can stop. You, that train's already left the station, left a long time ago, and I think that I don't think you can, you can stop it. Mm -hmm. So I'll say just as we close here, a couple sure. things that, that I know are, are mistakes in the community. So some people think that if I vote to end the DDA, that it's gonna solve all the budget woes of the village and we're gonna have perfect water lines in the whole village. And I'll say that that's not true. <laughs> so, so that's one of my uh, mistruths. I also know that having the, been the person for Brooks Patterson that ran the Main Street program, this is a pretty good program. Oh, it's it's been the result of a significant amount of years. And I'll be the first to tell you that without the DDA, the program is unfunded and it goes away. So a couple of my things is don't, don't vote on this with mistaking information. I'm not telling anybody how to vote. I'm just saying, just, you know, don't be foolish about it. But right. um, uh, before we wrap up, we talk about how to vote. Brian, what's the number one, the number one thing if you're, if you're not opponents, but if you're counterparts on the other side were here, what's the number one short thing you would say, this is the most important reason you vote no? The most important reason you vote no is if you love how our community is today and you want it to continue to be the community we have today and maybe even a little bit better then you need to vote no because otherwise you know it's almost like if you're not growing you're dying and if we don't keep the funding source that we need to support the community in the way that we have in the, the last multiple decades then I, I don't even want to talk about it, but the, the future looks grim to me. Jamie, same question to you. I, you know, I echo everything he says. I would, I would say don't, th 
throw the tool away. We need that tool. Um, but I think more importantly, I think from, from as getting a message out to the people is just don't assume that this is, like we think that this is a no-brainer and, and that why are we would be doing this. I think the other side is, and to their credit, is, is was started out very well organized. Um, they, in order to get it on the, on the ballot, they had to have a um, petition. They got enough signatures, so there's enough support out. Whether people are changing their minds or not, we're hoping to change your mind. But don't just assume that you don't need to vote. We need every vote out there to vote no. Absolutely. So, so as we close, I'll just say this, and I, I, I think I'm talking to the right camera, one of these cameras, but uh, uh, voting on issues like this are often the forgotten issues. You get mm -hmm. very small turnout, and then after the fact, everybody complains that, oh my gosh, how did that happen? And you say, oh, well, only 312 people decided to vote. Um, uh, voting has become, whatever you believe about the system has become um, much easier. So you can go vote t tomorrow, I think. At Saturday. The, or Saturday. Early starts, voting Early voting, early voting starts, starts Saturday. Saturday. So not tomorrow, but Saturday. Mm -hmm. You can go vote early. You just have to go to the Township Hall on Joslin mm -hmm. Road. They're going to administer this election for the village as the great clerk we have administers mm -hmm. all of our elections. Mm -hmm. um, you can vote absentee. Uh, I'm you assuming can vote you can absentee. vote absentee. That is mm -hmm. open all the way till the election day. Election day is on November 7th. 7th. And so uh, if you're like me and you like to be patriotic, you can walk yourself in to the precinct two on, on the 7th and uh, vote that way. There's a significant amount of ways that you can be engaged. Um, I would say just to wrap up, thanks to both of you. Um, yeah. it, it's, a, you. it's a rare thing when business people or citizens or residents down the street decide, to, you know what, I, I just want to be passionate and neither one of you are going to gain any fame or fortune out of this. No. No. It's just something you believe passionately. Yeah. And so thank you for, uh, for sharing that. And I encourage everybody, just please get informed and most importantly, get yourself to the voting place in one way or another. Matt, can I say one thing before we close up? We do have a website, so if oh, it, people have questions, it's, it's uh, save the lake, L O D D A. Save if, the lake the Orion DDA DDA dot com. Dot com or visit us on Facebook if you want more information. Perfect. I'm glad you want, got that in at the last minute. We want educated, we want, at the end of the day, we want educated voters. That's great. Yep. All right. Thank you to you two. Thank you. And thanks to Lake Orion. Go Dragons in the football playoffs. Yeah.